What's up YouTube? Today we're going to take a look at lead code problem number 1364. Number of trusted contacts of a customer. Mark is medium. Let's get into it. So we have a table called customers, contacts and invoices. Customers contains customer information, a customer ID, their name and an email address, while contacts contains information about the contacts of these customers. Each row of this table contains the name and email of one contact of customer with user ID. This table contains information about people each customer trusts. The contact may or may not exist in the customer's table. We also have a table called invoices. Each row of this table indicates that a user ID has an invoice with an invoice ID and a price. And the invoice already has the entire price. It's not price per item, but already the price of the entire invoice. There's also a user ID in there. Our task is to write an SQL query to find the following for each invoice ID. Customer name price of the invoice which is already summed up, context count being the number of contacts related to the customers being in the context table and then trusted context count which is the number of contacts related to the customer and at the same time they are customers to the shop i.e. his or email exists in the customers table. So trusted contacts are ones that are contacts of a customer and that already made a purchase as well. So they are trusted by the company so to say. You should also order the result table by invoice ID and our result format would be in the following format. Invoice ID, customer name, price, context count and our trusted context count. Let's get into it. So let's first of all select our output fields we need according to the output format. We have invoice ID, customer name, price, then we want to create our context count and trusted context count but let's just see where we're going to have to select these basic fields from. So we have invoice ID, which is in invoices. We have customer name, which is in customers. And we have price, which is also in invoices. So for these two, we're going to need, so for these, we're going to need customers and invoices. But then we're also going to use contacts for the trusted contacts and just contact count. So we're probably going to have to join all three so let's get into doing that. Let's maybe keep the order of customers joining contacts and then we're also joining invoices. Okay and customers should join contacts on customer ID and user ID. So user ID and customer ID should match say customer dot customer ID should be contacts dot user ID yes and invoices we also have user ID so contacts dot user ID could be customers, let's do customers. Should be invoices.user ID. In customers, it's not called user ID, it's called customer ID. Let's be careful here. Let's see what this gives us. I think I forgot to add on here. So let's try to come up with our counts first being context count so let's just count contact name or email I think email is going to be better in case we have people with the same name later on and let's call that contacts count That's what it should be called for our output and then we also need trusted contact count and this one is the trickier one it's also, we also need to count up something, but the key information is that they show up in the customers table. That is given, given here. The number of contacts related to the customer and at the same time they're customers to the shop. His or email exists in the customers table. So that's what we're going to check for. And that's just the name. 
So let's see. If the contact email of no. Yeah, we have email and customer, so we can check whether the contact email shows up in the email field of customers. So if the contact email is in customers, which we're going to establish here, we're just going to select email from customers. We could do distinct here in case they show up multiple times, but I don't think we need it. And if that's the case, we will count that as one, and if not, we're going to count it as zero. So if you're not using MySQL or MySQL, you might have to use case when then. I really like this syntax, the short if syntax from MySQL, but you could change it to case when contact email in customers, then one else zero and. Not going to do that here. Um, there's a reason I'm using MySQL because I think sometimes you can have shorter code, code and that's what we're doing here. So if we sum up the result of that code block, it's going to sum, sum up the amounts of ones we have. So for each time that is true, the contact email of that contact is in the customer's table. We're going to count that as one. And if not, then zero. And if we take the sum of that, we get the amount of trusted contacts being contacts of a, customer's, uh, of a customer that are also in the customer's table. So let's see what that gives us. Let's check the brackets here. I think I also need brackets for the if statement. And then since we're counting up and summing up, we want to do that per invoice ID. It says here, write an SQL query to find the following for each invoice ID. So we need to group by invoice ID in the end. And let's see what that gives us. It does give us an output similar to the one we should output. If we order that by invoice ID, by default ascendingly, then it should look very similar to the output, but still not correct. What's different here is, which we can easily see by using that difference function here in difference feature here in lead code, we don't have John in there since John is the only one with no contacts and also no trusted contacts. So we don't have anything to join on. John's user ID or custom ID doesn't show up in the contacts table, which is why we can't establish a join and we won't put out the information for John since we couldn't join it on the contacts table. That's why we need to use a left join on the contacts table. So let's add that in here. We're going to left join contacts so that all customers show up in our output, regardless of whether they have contacts or not. So what's going to happen in here is everyone's still going to match the same way, except John is going to get null values for contacts since he doesn't have any. But that allows us to count up the contact emails being null and that way it's going to return zero for the output. Same happens for that sum that calculates our trusted contacts and that way we're going to be able to count up these null values and create these zero values. And that gives us an accepted output and if I submit that it's also going to give us an accepted submission. And the key thing here is to remember or apart from solving all that, is to remember that you can count up null values and they're going to appear as zero and you can only do that by using the left join. And that appears in multiple problems on lead code. So once you remember that, um, maybe you see output and see there's no zero values, that's like the only ones missing. 
you're probably going to remember that you're going to have to use a left join to be able to count these as zero as well. Okay, that's pretty much it for that problem. That's been a bit more of a complicated one, but I think this way, if, if you start slowly and think about what you want, how you calculate it, it's pretty much given in the description, then you should be able to solve it. I have a lot of other videos here on this channel on lead code database problems, so make sure you stick around. I also have a playlist for all these problems, and you can also, also always leave a subscription if you want these in your subfeed. Hopefully, I'll see you guys in one of the other videos. Until then, bye.